Hello everyone, I am Miss Love and I am going to be showing you how to use your markers and colored pencils when it comes to your sketches. So here, uh, this process is for when you uh, have the details for the hair, you have the body fully clothed um, and you will learn later on that when it comes to clothing your croquis, you want the clothes to sit on the body. Because of course, when you wear clothes, they are sitting on your body. So they are not supposed to look like they are painted on to the croquis. They are supposed to sit on your body. So what we have right here is a sketch that is traced over with your micron pen. Um, if you have looked at your your uh, supply list, you will see that micron pens are listed. And this is basically Bristol paper or like really good paper so that you can color, you can use your markers and your color pencil on. Now I am going to say that when you use this, you may need to have another sheet of paper behind it because it can bleed through your paper. So let me go ahead and get that. In this case, I have two sheets of paper that I can put behind here. So the markers that you will need are either Prismacolor or Copic markers. And those markers are also on your supply list. So please take a good look at the supply list that you have. So these are the markers these are the markers that will be used you will also need skin tone colors as well as regular colors so these are copic these are how the copic markers look so you will need to have skin tone markers and so i am going to use this brown, this really light brown, it is called chamois. And of course with these markers, you have the big side, and you have the little tiny side. Now what I do like about these markers is that if you ever run out, you can order. I like this one has run out, so it's a good thing that I did check. So I have to order a refill. With the Copic markers, you can order a refill on it. And then you can use that to add back in the marker. So you have to take this out to add the color back in. So I'm going to put in that order really quickly. Order chamois. So because that is not working, I'm going to have to use another marker. I am going to use this sand. And let's check. And this works. So, what we are going to do, you want to have a little bit of space, you want to have a little bit of color where it is. And 
not shown the reason why you want to have a little bit of white space that's what I meant to say you want to have white space on here the reason why you want to have this white space is this is where your light source is going to come in also you want to be really careful so you want to do nice strokes but you want to make sure that they are very neat also you want to practice on this in our ears and just on this side a little white mark well just one little mark so you are going to continue wherever you see skin that is where you are going to color and of course in this case because she has on a blazer. This is going to be covered up. But that light source is going to hit her neck. And then we're going to do like one little mark for her hand. And then Got the hand out the way. And then for the legs. And you want to be really careful on the legs because the color can slip away from you. You can see right there, I just messed up. I colored out of the lines and you don't want to do that. So you want to stay in the line as much as you possibly can. But I think I know of one way we can cover that up towards the end. So the way that I'm holding my marker I am using the pointy using the pointy side to color. You don't want to in certain spots you can go broad, but at the same time you have to be careful because as stated before, you don't want to color outside of your space and then mess things up. Okay, so once we finish, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. And then we are going to go over this again, but instead of doing the whole thing, you're just gonna do the side. The reason why you wanna do the side is because you are creating your shadow. So I'm gonna take the broad side again, and this time, we're going to just color just on the side, just putting in that shadow detail.
you can kind of go in under here. Just a little pop of shadow. Okay, once we have that out the way, then we are going to pick our colors for the jacket. So for some reason, I am looking at red. And I think I might want to use this strong red. So we are going to test. So this is strong red. And so we are going to test to see if it works. And it does. And so then, just like how we did the face, well, we did the body, we are going to do the same thing to the clothes. Have that space available for your light source. you're just going to do nice strokes you don't want to color like that because you'll be able to see every mark so you just want to do nice long strokes so therefore able to blend in nicely Like I said again, nice long strokes and I'm being careful with these strokes. And because of this little under part of the jacket, this is where you'll see your hem and if it is lined, part of the lining. So you're just gonna color that in, but just know that these little parts right here, this little under part of the jacket, which is basically the hem, just know that that is going to be darker. So we're gonna go back in later and we are going to make that darker. The reason why I am not coloring in my blazer is because I am thinking about making that blazer another color. And because I'm so close to the hand, I'm trying to be careful because of course I do not want to color any red over my hand. And then for 
for these little small spots, you can take the small side of the marker and carefully color in those spaces. So because this small, this fine tip marker is like a brush, you can kind of treat it like that and just lightly color in those spots. And I'm just stroking just one little stroke. And as you can see, I am carefully doing this. And then we are on to our sleeves. And I'm coloring in any white spots that are shown. Also, you want to make sure that you have enough space to where you can freely move around. Because in certain spots, it can be hard to hard to render. And render is another word for color. So you want to have as much room to be comfortable. I'm just going to do another little small light source. Okay. And then just like with the hem of the jacket, you are going to color in the sleeve. But like I said, remember, I'm gonna color this in. So, what color do I want to use? For some reason, I feel that I had a green somewhere. And I do. I think I might use this, is it Malachite? It's basically this green right here. If you can see that. And we are going to check to see if this works. And it does. But at the same time, I like this teal blue. And this is a prism color. I feel that this teal blue might be better. And there is still enough color in it. Now one, here's the difference with prism color and Copic. With Copic, I feel that there's more ink. With Prismacolor, even though there is a good bit of ink, it dries out easily. So, although I like it, you have to be, you have to basically just watch it because they could get dry really quickly. With this particular marker, it's working great. small spot use this small fine tip marker to 
bakalım. I just want to color this button on here, this teal blue. Okay, so I'm going to color this skirt black. So this is 100% black with Copic. And I'm just gonna get all the details. Like I said, if it's a wide object that you need to color like this skirt, you can use the side of the marker, but you have to be careful. Now we have the skirt completed. We're going to get this under part of the skirt. And again, you have to be very careful. I'm using this like I would do a brush. Just kind of brush it. And I don't know if you can notice, but like when you are using your markers, because they're wet, it makes the paper rise. Just be careful with that. So as that dries, I'm taking my strong red again, and I am doing my outside stroke for my shadows.
are taking our teal blue and we're going in and then on the side another way that you can kind of make your shadows pop is by using gray. I think I'm gonna try to start with this natural gray just to see how that's going to work. The reason why I'm gonna use this is just give a subtle shadow. As you can see, it's working good. So just do a stroke. it under here too. So like for the dark colors, we can use like a darker gray. In this case, we're gonna try to do this cool gray number seven to see how that's going to work. And like I said, we're just gonna do a quick stroke. This way, it looks like there's some wear on the clothes. And then we're gonna go back and add our details, our shadow details. And because of this blazer, there's gonna be a hint of a shadow under here. Not because it's black, you really won't be able to see it. And then we're just gonna go here. And also, like I said, because this hem is gonna be a little darker, we want to use our gray and color in there. So therefore you will see some shadow. on the sleeve and on the hem of the jacket. And I feel that we should color our top black too. And one thing that I usually do, but I guess I did not do it because I was trying to get the clothes colored I forgot the details of the face. So, what we want to do, and I have another set of markers that we can use. So I will be right back. Okay, so for things like lips, eyes, uh, the markers that I use are these, um, is it Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell? I think it's Faber-Castell. Uh, the six pick pit artist pins and so these are small but you can get really nice color with them so I'm gonna use these to color the lip and again I'm using them like they're a brush I use these on the lips as well as on the eyes. So I have this brown marker and I've used this quite a bit so the tip is not as nice as it should be, but it works very good. So again, gonna use this 
like a brush. Okay, so I need to get another one of these. The color in the eyes. Let's see if I have another one. Nope. I'm gonna have to get another brown marker. Also, I can use this leather color brown. I thought I had another brown, but I guess not. I can use this for the eye color too. So we're just going to do a double. And because I did not put lashes on here, I'm going to use this 100%, this 100 black. This is black, and I'm just going to lightly brush lashes on her. And I'm just stroking, using very light strokes. Got the face out the way, now we need to color the hair. And I feel that the hair should be brown, but I want it to be a dark brown. So I am a dead plant. Other one is sepia. Okay, so I am going to get a brown. Hold, please. So I have this Prismacolor and dark brown. I haven't used it in a while, so hopefully it will work. So I'm going to start on this side, and it works great. Another difference from the Prismacolor and the Copic, I feel that with the Copic, it's, it's sharper, which means that you get a more even, well, a more sharper um, edge when it comes to rendering, whereas with With the Prismacolor, it's very broad. So it's great for like large, large spaces, but you still have to be really careful with it. But with the Prismacolor, I really like how with the fine tip, 
you can really get into those small spaces. And as you can see, I'm just doing long even strokes or little short even strokes. Making sure to color in the edge so I won't color outside of that line. So we got the outside of the hair out the way, but I feel that we might have to go in and add another color. So I need this. And it gives like a nice ombre effect. So for our earrings. Oh, I had a nice yellow in here. There it is. Then again, we might do those green. Let's do that. For our shoes, I'm gonna do red. And I think we might do red and black. If you have to move your paper, just be careful.
use this strip of yellow for some reason. I just feel I need to do that. Just to give it a pop color somewhere. Just lightly rendering and I'm using the very tip of this black I'm not I'm not even bearing down in it okay so, then we're going to do like another sh adding more red to it just for detail and then I'm going to go back over it. with gray. Okay. So now we have our illustration. It's colored in very nicely, but what I also want to do Let's add in some pops of color. So I'm going to bring this back down and I'm going to use my color pencil to add in those pops of color. So this set that I have is basically, I'm going to put this right here, the Prismacolor Premier. So this is 150 color pencils. So it has every color that you could think of, but I'm also going to get something else. So hold please. I also like to use Crayola. The reason why I use Crayola is because if you use Prismacolor for the face, it's gonna kind of make it really hard to, you can't really color lightly on it and I want the makeup to be kind of light. So I use Crayola so it can actually look like makeup on her face. So, for my blush, I think I'm going to use red. And I'm just going to color in lightly. I'm going to do it on both sides. And I'm going to gonna also bring in I'm gonna do this light brown so we can give a little bit of shadow so I don't know if you can see that but gives like a little blushed effect so, yeah, I think I'm going to use red, a little bit of red for the eyes, but also I'm going to go back in and use green. And this is, yeah, this is just regular green. I thought it was dark green. I 
think I might give her like a little smoky eye effect. Just a little tad. some black too. Okay, so we have the face completed. So for the body, because green is a complementary color of red, I'm going to add some greens in as well as some purples and probably blues. So I'm going to add in plenty of shadows and plenty of highlights. So I think I want to add in this deco yellow. And this is for white. Even though we have our light source, we're going to add in another. We might add in some light pinks too. So this is a deco pink. And I'm just gonna add it in the middle of that deco yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit into the sleeve. And Add a little bit in that skirt. So again, I feel that I might just add some blues to really make this pop. I think I'm going to use this ultramarine just for the shadows. as well. Gonna add this is Parma Violet. adding the 
Palmer Violet in where that shadow is. Aquamarine, just to see what it's going to do. Coming out quite nicely. I'm going to add this in here. Just add it in the skirt. So it's just like giving a colorful shadow and then we can also add it in the hair just a little bit And I think I might add some of that deco yellow into the hair too. Okay, so last but not least, there's one little part that I want to do. So if you want to just create another little shadow, um, FYI, you do not want to use your markers on top of color pencil because you will mess up the tip of your markers. So instead, use your markers, then use your color pencils. So therefore, you'll still have nice nice markers but one thing that i like to do is just give a nice little shadow so i'm using my black to just create a shadow on the outside of my silhouette And then remember when I said that I messed up and 
I found a way you can cover it up. Well, this is one of the ways where you can cover it up. So there. We are officially done. It only took an hour. Last but not least, one thing that you will have to do is create your signature. And you sign it. Any part of the body, you can do it on the leg, on the arm, um, on the hair. So I chose to do it on the side of the leg and you also want to add your year. So this is basically your signature, your watermark, your whatever on your illustration. So this has gone from a nice sketch to fully rendered illustration. Um, I really hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed this video.